Thank you for coming, everyone. Um, today's about celebrating. It's about celebrating the life of our colleague, Raja Fayad. Uh, I really appreciate you taking time out to come over uh, today. We've got a few remarks that we're going to go through. Um, but I wanted to, to lead off. I guess I should say who I am. I, I'm Tom Chandler. I'm dean of the Arnold School, if you don't, don't know me. I'm also a very good friend and close colleague with, with Raja. Um, I'd like to start today with uh, uh, some comments provided by President Pastides. He can't be with us today. He's in Tampa uh, at the, uh, the Women's Basketball Championship, but he'd like to be here. He knew Raja, and he was touched, as, as we all were, or are by his loss. As the weeks have passed following the sad loss of our colleague and friend, Dr. Raja Fayad, Neither the purpose nor the explanation for his being taken away from us has become apparent. While the acute phase of grief and sadness is dissipating, let us please recognize that we are not able to comprehend all things that touch us deeply. Perhaps we can turn this confusion into greater compassion for each other in this precious academic society of ours. Each one of us is our brother and our sister's keeper. Let us become better keepers, better neighbors, and better associates in the Arnold School and in our greater campus community. And let us keep Rajah's spirit close as it kindles us to do more and to do better. And all please remember the words of the famous Lebanese poet Khalil Gibran. When you part from your friend, grieve not, for that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence, as the mountain to the climber is clearer from the plain. That's from President Pastides. We have a video that we're going to uh, stream to Raja's family in Lebanon. He's from a, uh, a reasonably good-sized family. Um, he has uh, three brothers and a sister. His mother's still alive and his father's passed. His brother's here with us, Mazen, uh, Mazen Fayad, right here, and Mazen will, will make a few remarks in a, in a moment. But thank you for coming. Mazen traveled from Lebanon to be with us uh, today. Well, as I said, we're here today to celebrate and memorialize the life of, of Raja Fayad. I polled many of you, many of you are friends of Raja's, and also polled Mazen, and I, and I just simply asked what would be the most fitting tribute for Raja, what we what we felt like he would, he would like uh, in lieu of a funeral service here. And we decided that a verbal tribute of remembrances from several close friends would certainly be appropriate. He would like that. He also loved the fellowship of a party. So we have refreshments, and hopefully after we dedicate uh, outside, we can come back in for some uh, from sharing of, of Raja stories, so to speak. And we also thought he'd like a living monument to his life here on earth, something that was beautiful as he was, something alive, something Lebanese, and something long-lived that would be here beyond all of us. Thus the idea was born of a centuries living Lebanese cedar tree as a lasting memorial. And we'll go outside in a minute and see the tree that we've uh, secured. From my own perspective, my own, my own relationship with Raja. I loved him as a colleague and a friend. Raja came here at about the same time that I was becoming the dean of the college, and, and as I was struggling as a new dean, he was struggling with tenure. He didn't have an easy time with it. And we became friends through our joint struggles. I would advise him on important metrics that he needed to hit to be able to become tenured and promoted, and he would advise me on what the faculty and students were saying about my leadership. <laughs> and we had a lot of great laughs about that. We really did. We shared more than a few cold beers together, and for his family, Raja always had sparkling water. I would drink the beer. <laughs> we talk about his family, who he, who he loved very dearly. He would talk about you, Mazin. He would talk about his his brothers and sisters, and there's 
his, and their children. We would talk about various Middle Eastern struggles around religion, which we never resolved. We would talk about politics. And, of course, we would talk about science. And science was really first in his, in his life, first in his mind in many ways. His lab was just down from my office on the fourth floor, and he'd often pop in to tell me how excited he was about a particular finding, particularly if it was a finding made by his students. He was all about his students and all about their welfare and, and well-being and professional development. He would tell me about his experiments. He thought they were interesting. I often didn't think they were that interesting, but that's mainly because I didn't really understand a lot about what he did with his research in colon cancer. But I still enjoyed his visits, mainly because he was excited about life, life in the academy, life in the community, life with those that he loved. I could tell that he genuinely cared about how I was getting along in my new job, and that was very important to me. And I'll miss him a lot. I miss him now. I'll miss him in the future. The school has an open wound. And a holly, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I wasn't going to do this. And a, and a, a hollow emptiness since his departure. We know that time will heal that. It always does. But Raj will never be forgotten so long as his friends, all of you, are around to tell others what he was like. And we'll raise money. We'll endow a scholarship in his name so that he'll be remembered in perpetuity. It'll be something, I think, that'll be dedicated to the pre-medical undergraduates that he spent so much time with advising, writing letters for. And one thing that I discovered as we were gathering his materials together in his office, he had, a, he had a large box filled with tributes, cards from his students, thanking him for the many letters that he wrote trying to get them into medical school. Um, I think that's his biggest tribute. You know, look at his students and look at, at what they've done and what they will do. Um, And that's, that's pretty much what I, what I need to say, I think. Um, so moving forward, I'd like to introduce Frank Berger. Frank directs our Colon Cancer Center. Frank, if you'd come up. Frank was a key mentor for Raja. His Colon Cancer Center provided a lot of, of material resources to get Raja started as a, as a scientist. But more importantly, Frank provided really heartfelt, warmth, friendship, scientific acumen and training, um, and was a good ear, I know, to Raja. Uh, so thank you, Frank, for coming to share with us a few of your thoughts. Thanks, Dean Chandler. It's, it's been almost to the day, two months, since we lost Raja, and it still feels like it never really happened. I, I keep coming every morning, open my email, and expect to see one from him wanting to meet with me to tell me about his, his latest findings, ask me for money, <laughs> um, tell me about his students, tell me about his classes. In 2006, the Center for Colon Cancer Research was given uh, four positions, what they called Faculty Excellence Initiative. These were supposed to be a set of hires that were clustered around a certain theme. And we got four, four of those positions, and one with one of them we partnered with Department of Exercise Science here in the School of Public Health, and that led to the hiring of, uh, of Raj. I can remember meeting him on one of his interviews, and I, I knew right away that this was the right person for this, this position, given the nature of these, these um, hires. It was really focused on a set of faculty that would collaborate with each other and with faculty that are already here. And you could tell from the first moment you met Raj that he fit that mold perfectly. The department was excited about him coming here. And I remember the first day I met him, he was in my office, he was smiling, he was excited, and he was asking me about who were the clinical collaborators that I could call and talk to about inflammatory bowel disease. He already had his ideas. And as I've said to a lot of people over the last couple months, he, he literally hit the ground running. He, um, 
His most salient characteristics was his positive attitude. All, all scientists get grants turned down. They get papers turned down. You have to be, you have to be, have a pretty thick skin to be a scientist, a research scientist. And most of us, when we get a grant turned down or a paper turned down, we think the reviewers don't know what they're talking about, mis misconstrued everything. They're a bunch of jerks. They shouldn't be reviewers. I'm going to complain all the way up to the governor's office and to the president's office. We're going to change NIH. Raj was not, Raj was not like that. He was always positive. His rea reaction was, I've got new data. Um, I can answer all these criticisms that are minor. I can't, and he couldn't wait to write a revised application or write, write a revised manuscript and put it back in. He was, one of the, he was one of the most positive people that I ever met. And so when he did want to come and see me, I always looked forward to it because it was always fun to talk to him. It was always, like I said, he was very, so very upbeat. He never, I never saw him in a bad mood. I never saw him complain. He was a central member of our center, and to the extent our center has been successful over the years, is due in part to his presence. He was extraordinarily collaborative. I used to always tell him, Raj, you got to focus, focus, focus. He was excited about so many different projects, each one with a different set of collaborators. Um, most of you have probably, many of you have probably seen over, the, over this last week the um, series from Ken Burns on cancer that was on PBS, um, Emperor of All Maladies. And one thing in watching that, it focused a lot on the major breakthroughs in cancer treatment and the history and what, what led to those breakthroughs and how, how they were paradigm changes in the, in, in the field of cancer research. And I thought of Raj because what didn't quite come through, and I could tell this when I talked to my wife about the film, was that these breakthroughs really represented tips of an iceberg. And underneath the water was this huge piece of the iceberg, which are all the scientific community that's doing all this basic research that led to or enabled these people to make these major moves forward in terms of understandings of cancer, understanding of the origin of cancer, the development of new therapies, particularly this, in the era we live in, in, in targeted therapies. And, and I remember, made me remember Raj, because Raj was part of that iceberg. And I always felt, with time, his research was, had a good possibility to become one of those tips of the iceberg that broke through the surface of the water. He was that positive, he was that excited about his research. He has a and I say has in the present, because this will always be Raj's project. Uh, the center funded him in a pilot project with two faculty, one in the School of Public Health and one in the School of Engineering. Really cool, new idea. And the two faculty, plus Dr. Carson, who's kind of picked up the ball on, on Raj's part of that project, know that I want to see nothing less than this project being successful. And if it is, it will always be a project in Raj's name. As I said, I keep thinking my email, I'm going to get a call from him to come see me. And I'll miss him greatly. He was a, a great colleague and will be missed. Thank you. So um, I've already shared a lot of my time with Raja that we had in the seven years that we started the same position at the same time in the Department of Exercise Science. And I guess as I'm listening to everybody's comments about Raj, I'm just so happy about the consistency of the message that we're sending about Raj, that he was just a really good person. So as sad as I am to say that having lost my friend in the circumstances that surround it, I'm very happy to have known Raj and called him my good friend. I think Raj, and I think, um, I think Frank nailed it. Raj was a glass half full kind of guy that he always had a positive spin on everything. And I think that that's why everybody loved being around him and loved everything that he did. And um, I know that I've told a lot of stories in a letter that I wrote about Raj on the day that it happened. But one of them that I was remembering after that 
I thought kind of summed up how I feel. When Raj first came here, he had an office on the third floor for a couple years, and I've always been on the first floor in the Prevention Research Center. And about three years ago, three or four years ago, Raj's office on the third floor was being remodeled, and he got relocated down on the first floor office suite, a couple offices down from mine. Uh, and all that time we spent going out to lunch together. He would always come and knock on my door with the same ceramic bowl that he brought from home and always put a paper towel over the top of it to stick it in the microwave. Um, and so he was down there for about a year. And then his lab got changed up to the fourth floor. And so he moved out all of his stuff out of his office, except the chairs and the table and the shelving. But he left his nameplate on the door, and on the door he had a little sticky that said, I'll be back. <laughs> and he left it up there for about another year after that. And whenever I'd see him, I'd always joke to him and say, Raj, you know, <laughs> there's been students waiting outside your door waiting for you to come back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think it's a bit misleading. You know, <laughs> are you going to come back or not? You just take the nameplate. You can just pry it off with a, uh, with a screwdriver. But, you know, that's kind of how I feel that, you know, he'll just be back. He'll be walking through the door when I'm down filling up my water bottle on the first floor. And he'll just come walking in and I'll say hello to him and he'll take the elevator up to his, to his office. Um, or that we'll, he'll be knock on my door and we'll go outside and eat lunch together. But I know that that's not going to happen. But I just want to say that I'm so happy that he was my friend and for the seven years that I had to be with him. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Raj was my friend. Raj, well, I was Raj's boss. <laughs> so he called me. Uh, but we were friends. And as I listened to Frank, I listened to Mike, I listened to Tommy. Raj has friends everywhere. Uh, I, I can talk with you of the things that I've said, Frank, a couple of weeks with your group and the things we said a couple of days after this all took place up on the horseshoe. But Raj was more than just well-liked. He was loved. His students loved him. Uh, I, I have said this at least twice openly, many times quietly, that... Uh, Raj could re wield a red pen just as good as anybody else in, in our department in, in, for the students. But the students always walked away after looking at those red marks uh, saying positive things, Tommy. Uh, because they knew that the comments he, he made on those papers, as we all try to make, but Raj seemed to be pretty good at it, and uh, were stepping stones to go in the right direction for what their career was going to be. And so I, I don't have any more to say other than Raj was my friend, and I will always remember Raj. So the first time that I met Raja was in fall 2012. I was uh, visiting USC as a faculty candidate. And Raja was on my uh, search committee. Uh, during that first encounter, I remember Raja uh, to be more of an advocate and a supporter uh, rather than a judge. Uh, he expressed his love for the university um, with energy and enthusiasm. Uh, and in the end, a large reason behind my decision to come here was, uh, was Raja. Uh, <clears throat> I was thrilled to have a fellow Lebanese who was uh, going to be my colleague and, and friend. Uh, and after my arrival, we met many times. Sometimes it was in this very uh, place. Um, and others were during, during one of his famous daily walks around this beautiful campus. Uh, he also visited us in our home uh, where we broke bread, um, Lebanese bread. Uh, we would exchange stories about Lebanon, uh, our common homeland that we both loved so much. Uh, Raja talked to us about his family uh, back home and about his dreams. Um, and uh, as a colleague in the Arnold School, I considered Raja to be a role model 
Uh, to me, he was a big brother who always encouraged me to take the next step and instilled confidence in me. Uh, and as a faculty member in exercise science, he occasionally lectured me on the benefits of uh, diet and exercise. <laughs> Um, although I did not have the privilege uh, of working directly with Raja, I learned from our many conversations how passionate he was about his research and how selfless and loving he was in the classroom as a teacher. Uh, and these traits were to be confirmed to me through the many testimonies I heard in the days following this tragedy. Uh, thanks to Dean Chandler and to colleagues in the Arnold School for uh, the newly established uh, Raja Fayyad Memorial Fund, uh, which means that Raja's legacy and giving to Carolina will carry on for future generations. Uh, to honor his memory, let us sustain uh, in our lives Raja's smile um, and his spirit of generosity and friendliness and kindness and goodwill. Uh, and as we celebrate Raja's life uh, and reflect upon his legacy at Carolina, I leave you with a few words from a fellow Lebanese American who preceded us. It's uh, Khalil Gibran, the poet and philosopher, who said, uh, the heart's affections are divided like the branches of the cedar tree. If the tree loses one strong branch, it will suffer, but it does not die. It will pour all its vitality into the next branch so that it will grow and fill the empty place. And I feel that it's very fitting that we're planting a, a cedar tree in, in Raja's memory. Uh, the cedar tree is, uh, in Lebanon, it's a, considered a uh, symbol of perpetuity. It's on the Lebanese flag. It's, um, uh, it's been around uh, since ancient times. It's mentioned in the, in the Bible uh, at least a dozen times. And, and it just uh, brings together all the Lebanese despite their differences. Uh, and that's how uh, I remember Raja as, as bringing us all together today and, and many other times. And, and, um, and um, so I'm glad that we're celebrating his life today. Thank you. Thank you. As people know, Raja was a dear friend of mine also. I met Raja actually on the plane from Chicago coming. And so we didn't actually know we were professors at the same university. And we chatted the whole way and then totally fell in love with trying to talk to each other. And, I have a note that's um, sent to me this morning, very short, short, but Raja worked with me in his lab in his lab, to do my studies on my work, which is on pharmaceutical safety, completely separate from colon cancer research. And he um, unfortunately did all the work. We couldn't find him any funding, and he did all the work on the 60 mice. He's still asking me for the money to pay for those mice. <laughs> but um, he did a tremendous amount of work, and uh, we have two manuscripts out for review with Raja, one where his team is first author, and the other one that's out to review that he, he supported me through, it's at JAMA, a really strong paper on conflicts of interest in pharmaceutical-sponsored basic science research. And Raja just had tremendous insights. And so the Linda Martin, who works with me, she's in Phoenix. Linda has taken a drug, Cipro and Leviquin. She's been damaged in the sense that she's been out of work for seven years now because of toxicity from the drug. And she spoke to me and to Raja about how she really feels that this drug caused her toxicity, and it's very controversial. And Raja said, well, look, let me feed the drug to some mice. If the mice get sick like you did, then it will give us some reassurance, in fact, that your sickness may be related to the drug. And in fact, Raja showed that work, that works under review with his, with his lab. And so uh, Linda's written a small but short note to say that the entire fluoroquinolone community, and that's about uh, 12, thousand folks around the country. We've been on TV probably three times a week for the last eight weeks about the research. So it's a tremendous amount of people that may or may not have been served by the drug, but she says, and I agree, they're immensely grateful to the work that Raja did for his kindness because she has searched out through an entire country to find people who might help her in her research project, and Raja was the only basic scientist who was willing to step up into a very controversial area and it's different with colon cancer research, and it's like Frank said, Raja can go with ideas anywhere he could. She said uh, many medical professionals were dismissing those of us, and she means her and her friends, who have been sick and potentially damaged by the drug, and these drugs are about $2.5 billion in sales, made by Johnson & Johnson and other large companies, really an uphill battle. Raja stepped forward to help. 
His research is significant and you'll have a positive impact in so many ways. And she says she speaks for her entire community of folks that are ill and are trying to get better. And she's appreciative of his compassion and his concern. And I second all those thoughts and can't say that I, I miss Raja so much in speaking to him as much as we did. Thank you. I just want to uh, speak a few words to Raja first. Raja, I want to start by saying how much you made us all proud of you. You dedicated all of your life to become a doctor, and an outstanding doctor you became. Here you continued with your research at USC and worked hard with your colleagues trying to improve human's life. For that, we thank you and promise you that what you had started will not finish. I love you as a brother, as a scientist, and as my closest friend. You shared my worries sometimes, but gave me hope and motivation all the time. You did not let us share your worries, because the only thing you like to share with people around you is joy and a smile. I want to thank everybody here friends, students, colleagues, in my name, and our family. And finally, you are always going to live in our hearts and thoughts. May God bless your soul. Now, please, I'd like to say a few words in Arabic. Raja, Akhi al-Habib, Nahnu huna liyom nahtafil bi injazatika wa naftakhir bika. Wa nuabbir laka an hubna wa ahtiraman al-kabirayn jiddam. آسف إني أودعك الآن لكنك باقي في قلبي وحياتي محيد. Thank you very much. Well, um, that's uh, nobody. I didn't request to speak after Mazin. It was a, a beautiful little speech. But in here, just in closing, I just wanted to summarize some of the, the very nice words that have already been said. I, I really appreciate having the opportunity to have the meeting here today as a, as a strong professional colleague of Raja from every the time he was interviewing here to mentoring him to coming up through. Uh, it's been a tough time. And in early on, a lot of it, this was really pushed on. We have to move through. We have to go forward. And I know a lot of you were pitching in that way, and that's what we were doing. But there was always that sense of loss there. But I hope today, as, as we have a little more distance, as Frank said earlier, that really my focus is just on remembrance, and, and that comes back to what was already talked about, just the good things and just, the, the, just the, what a positive person he was. And basically what had me thinking when we had this today is this time of year we have a lot of faculty meetings, we have TMP, we have evaluations, and a, and a lot of it comes back to, to a word we use a lot, which is impact which is influence, you know, lasting uh, effect on something. And we, you know, being researchers and quantitative side, we try to put numbers on all sorts of things, citations. We try to put numbers on journal values for where we publish things, dollar amounts, and in some way that we can gauge impact. And what, what I'd like to just tell you today is what this um, event has made clear to me is that we have a long way to go with our metrics if we truly want to measure the impact that an individual has on, on our department or our community here in the university. And I think you saw that in some of the things that uh, were said earlier. Just to speak to that, and even to the research side that Charlie was talking about just a second ago, I just want to give you a few examples. And certainly what comes to me and is point out is just to mention the undergraduates. And when I met with a lot of the students, in the different groups um, after this tragedy. What became clear when I met with his Exercise 620 class, which he had only had for several weeks, but several of these students had had him in, in other capacities while their time was here at the, the university. Most of them were seniors. It's just how moved they were with the loss of Dr. Fayot and how much they really wanted to take this class and how much his MD sort of mindset had really made a big difference to them on how they were looking at 
the aspect. He developed this whole class on immunology and nutrition. It was his. And it quickly went to what we thought would be a niche class of 15 to 20 students to being a class of 60 students that was closed out. There were far more students wanting to get into his course than we could basically um, allow. And this was just an amazing tribute to uh, him and what students thought of him and what they thought they could get out of the class related to his future. I just want to speak a little bit about his graduate students because what's come clear, and you might have read some things in the paper and others, just how loyal this group was to him. And that doesn't come by accident. That came from their interaction with Raja. And what you saw with that is a group of students many times who would fill a full load of teaching to pay for their school and stipends and then go work an additional full load in his laboratory to try to carry out the research that they thought was so important. And that dedication and loyalty you just saw and the resilience and how they want to carry through the research they're currently working on, including the uh, project that uh, um, Frank was mentioning that they were working on with the Colon Cancer Research Center. So I think that just shows you a little bit about the determination that Raja instilled in these individuals. And lastly, just as the faculty, and I think it came through several times in here today, just the positive attitude that he basically instilled in all of the people he met, including his colleagues and others. And even through all that we know, the things that might have been going on, the amount of work he was doing for us in the department and in the school so that we can go on with our daily routines related to the graduate director duties, leading searches, and one of the things that he was great at, cutting deals to buy new equipment. This guy could negotiate with anybody. And uh, it's just tremendous. And that um, attitude, the positive attitude that goes with that, um, really uh, speaks to who he was. So what I'd leave you with with that is I think the evidence is clear related to Raja Fayad's amazing impact on the exercise science department, the Arnold School of Public Health, and our university. And what I just hope, um, I just sincerely hope out of all this as we talk, and a lot of us, everything from students to senior faculty, is that his actions and his accomplishments in a fairly short time of six to seven years will come to inspire us and provide us a real model. And as we try to look at things, well, what do you emulate? All right, to strive for if we really want to have an impactful career, if you really want to um, strive to have that in, in your career here at USC or beyond. I think we just found uh, a good role model to emulate. So thank you. But what we're going to do now, we're going to take Mazin out and we're going to dedicate the uh, Lebanese cedar tree. It's a weeping form of the Lebanese cedar, the original cultivar would overwhelm this building in about 60 years. So we've got a form that will have branches that will, that will swoop down. So uh, according to our uh, horticulturist here, it should be just fine for uh, at least a couple of hundred years. So, uh,